The Lord comes into every life to visit them. He comes and checks you out. He comes uh, and, and makes sure that you're on the right path. And if you're not, believe you me, the angels have orders as to what to do with you. Because they have to answer to God for what they've done with you. And if they're not leading you and helping you and guiding you into the truth, then what is happening is they're going to answer for it. So they have to keep a close watch over you. And they do. Oh, I, I remember seeing all the angels. And, and when God first tr started training me, I mean, he really, I mean, he took me into dreams. He took me into visions. And I didn't read books over it. And people who tear, tell you that this color means this and that color means, to them, that's what it means. But it's not for everybody. God will take even the people that go before the Lord and dance. They have teams where they all dance. I always dance before the Lord between him and I. And I didn't care who saw it or who didn't. Uh and most people, if I went to a church where they had a dancing team and they wanted to recruit me, I couldn't go because I would have to deny how God led me between me and him. Do you understand what I'm telling you, the difference between him and I? I couldn't do that. So I want to talk to you about visiting. God will come and visit sins. He will come and visit and see if where you're at. See if you're doing what you ought to be doing. He will visit you. And it is exactly the same with all of his preachers and teachers who claim him. The, the, oh, many of them are in false doctrine. Many of them are preaching the wrong thing. Many of them are using the word of God to make themselves better and rich and higher. And many of them, not just one or two of them, many of them have destroyed the church. I can remember when God came to me and he visited me and he came to me and he sat right there right at my table and looked at me with big tears in his eyes and he said to me Marion I gave them my word I gave them my name I gave them the Holy Spirit I gave them access to the throne I gave them everything and he was crying he says and look what they did with it they destroyed my church. My people can't find me. My people can't hear me. They're so busy looking for prosperity, looking for blessing, looking for this. No one is seeking me. When he took me aside and said he wanted to teach me and talk to me, and I told you he took me for 10 years, where it wasn't a matter of me praying and talking to him. I had I couldn't say nothing to him. He was pouring out his spirit on me and teaching me, and my whole body, mind, and spirit was receiving, and therefore I had nothing to do with it. And at the end of that, when he told me I received my anointing, and and I and I told you this, eighteen hours a day felt like five minutes. This is what it was like. I, a cloud was, was in my room. A cloud would come and I would walk through the clouds. I would walk through the cloud of the glory of God. I didn't ask God for none of that. It was what he did with me that brought it all. And the proof is in that book that you could see I didn't earn it. The things that I did with God when I was a young, reborn Christian will tell you, I didn't earn it. I didn't earn none of this. There is no way that any man or any woman can earn what he has given and done to me. Just, it's impossible. He will either pour it out on you or he won't. And you can't even request it because you could beg him for it. And he's still not going to give it to you because he's going to give it to those whom he called. That is how I see the Trump presidency, that God didn't call him because he was so good, so great, so nice looking, so rich. God didn't call him for none of those reasons. God called him long time ago. God started working with him long time ago.
to prepare him for America, to prepare him to be what he was supposed to be so that he could hear his voice. And, and Trump, I will tell you, had no idea of what was happening. I mean, he went into things, and I'm sure that he's condemned for it, that he went into things, and once he found out what it was like, he backed up and got out. Once he really saw what was going on, he backed up and got out. He had more sense than some of these preachers have, because once they got into pornography or any kind of thing, they didn't back up and get out. They just went right into it and thought, well, God is going to take care of it. God is, I mean... Like I said, there's pastors that were so filled with lust and they would be preaching, well, you don't worry about it. You just speak in your heavenly language and God will take care of it all. No, no, he won't. No, he won't. He has no room for sin. He's going to visit the sin. So when he came to me in 2002, and told me the church was in trouble. This is what he told me. And he told me, I'm going to raise you to such a degree that I'm going to use you to, to bring people to the place where they will be ready to go in the rapture, where they will keep their garments clean, where they won't walk and talk the way they are today in thinking that this is okay with God and that is okay with God. You have to be a God chaser. You have to be someone that pursues God because you love him. If you pursue him to be known, to be understood, to be, those are all the wrong reasons. And if you can't pursue him because you love him, then pray with all your heart that he make you that way, that he create in you a clean heart. You have no idea how many times I prayed that prayer over me. How many times I would go before God and I would find something in me that was not lined up to the word of God. And I would pray, dear God, have mercy on me and help me to line up to you. Help me, forgive me and help me. That This is a process that you cannot escape. And he can't raise up his armies in the Lord to defy the Antichrist if they won't listen. If they think they have it all and they think they need, they have need of nothing. I mean, the highest in the church sits so safe in their heads that they're positive. They need no one to teach them and no one is higher than them. They got a long way down. Honestly, they do because there's a lot of things they've done that needed corrected. And if God ever sent them correction, they wouldn't listen. They would not listen. Because they set their minds, they became so opinionated in who and what things are, that if a true man or woman of God came up to them, you know what they did with them? They ripped them apart and called them Jezebels. Now, I'm not saying that everybody uh, that ever walked through a church that had more than them was, wasn't a Jezebel, because I'm sure there were many Jezebels out there. But a Jezebel is is much, much different than you think. A Jezebel wasn't a Jezebel because she painted her eyes, although that was part of it. She wasn't a Jezebel because she was a Jezebel and, and God hated it because when Ahab could not obtain his neighbor's garden by asking him for his property, she saw her, her the Ahab. She says, why is your countenance so down? And he said, because... This man would not give him his garden. So she said, why, you king, kill him and take it, which he did. But that is the same reasoning that the left has right now in BLM and all of them. You're seeing Jezebel spirits and people are saying, well, the Jezebel spirit is so powerful that only a pastor can, can deal with them. Only this, oh. Where did these things come from? I know a man who has now passed away, considered one of the greatest prophets, who actually taught, and I, I could tell you the name of his book, he actually taught, don't touch abortion. It was sent by God. The evil God put it there, and you'll be going against God. How did he know? Because when his 
church, which was very large, began to pray about abortion. All of them, he said, came down with fibromyalgia, which is a curse. Now, common sense would tell you that as soon as you go against Satan, he's going to try and attack you. But you don't back up and say, oh, it's God says, don't touch it. But where is the mind and the reasoning? I mean, there's a lot of prophecies that this man came came true. But by, at the, by the same token, there's a lot of things that are wrong. Uh, he wrote another book about the Jezebel spirit, about how it's so powerful. You know, when you read something about how powerful Satan is and gives you the impression that you can't overcome it, you are denying the blood of Jesus Christ. When you hear pastors say, well, once you delve into uh, and have the occult in your life, you can never get over it. That denies the blood of Jesus Christ. That's insane. You're at one in one mouth confessing God, and with the other one, you were denying him. This is what this country is doing right now. With one mouth, they are confessing God, and the other part of the mouth, they are denying him. And this is what the parishioners does with all their money. They come and put it in the coffers and they, oh, they claim the Holy Spirit just bless them, but they go home and live like demons. And they take all this money off of the poor. You've got to understand that you, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The scriptures are true. On one hand, on one side of your mouth, you do it. You, you believe and do what's right. On the other side of your, your mouth and your mind, it's completely different. And that's what's in this book. This book tells you about this stuff. This book tells you how God's going to come and judge the church first. Everybody is looking for judgment to fall on those who are in the left doing all, and they've been running rampant, but God, God is holding the church responsible. Don't you realize that? It isn't that he's holding you responsible for what you didn't know, but with what little bit you had. Ask yourself how much caring did you care about the atrocities that these children were going through with pedophiles? How much agony did you go through in the spirit in crying out to God for him to deliver them? How many times a day do you think of them? How many times, a, how many, how often, or are you busy? You, well, I'll do, I'll, I'll pray about that after I get this done. And then you forget. Well, I'll pray about that after I go here, but then you forget. Well, I'm, you know, I'll think about that later, Lord, because I have to go fishing today or I have to go and, and do whatever, you know, you can make anything a sin. You can. All the things that God meant good for you. And that's why it's important that you go before God first. First. You go before him about everything first. You ask him first what he thinks. Ask him first what he means. Ask him first. You don't put him off. You feel an impression that I should do this and you put him off. And you put him off for days till you forget that you had that impression. Understand what God is all about. Understand how he works in the relationship with man. That's life. That's every single day life. A few years back, I was called to mentor to some teenagers, and some of them were seniors, and they were going to be going into college. I could have taught them a million things, but when I got in front of them, I could not do anything but teach them about life. And I got feedback from them, where they told me, they said, more than any other person in their life, I prepared them to live life in college without their parents, because they were transforming from one life into the next. And I was revealing to them how to protect themselves from what they're going to be taught, because in college you're bombarded. You are literally, by the professors, you are bombarded with your body and your mind to take away from you what you learned all of your lifetime. 
you are bombarded to accept an alternative lifestyle. You are bombarded that if you feel this and you think that, it is because you are this way. None of that is true. None of it. You can have family curses on you that it gives you these feelings and you have no idea how to break them. You could have a million different things in your life and influences that made you think and feel that way. Even to children that don't even understand. But the parent who really loves God knows how to gather them up and protect them and break these powers that try to take them. The parent that, that knows God, which I'm going to go into the next video about the parent that knows God.